Hello and welcome to Fork in Politics. I'm Calvin Chapman, your host. And today we're going to discuss my views on Emery Waters and what's happened over the last few months. So as with all of my videos, there is this video itself, um, but it's also shown on the website and the website has the full script of what's written for this episode. So if you want to see uh, why I've said something or you want to see citations, because most of other than personal opinion, if I'm stating a fact, there is a um, citation on it and that will be down in the description. But up on the website is where you'll see my detailed analysis. If you still disagree with me, please leave a comment down below. Reach out to me on Twitter. As far as I'm concerned, we're all in the same arena of politics. And I don't think we need to fall out over um, who likes and who does not like certain people. In July, I was going to do a Amory Waters video and it essentially was saying I I disagree with her and I do not want well not so much I don't I don't disagree with her, I just don't think her approach to things is what I would like for um you keep going forward. So I ended up not doing it, but what I have done is again on the website at the bottom of that article you'll see the entire script that i had written for uh the july video that never got made so you'll be able to see from uh july to now how how much my uh views on memory wars has changed and i think that might surprise some people obviously isn't going to come as a surprise to say that i did not and would not have voted for emory waters this video is is predominantly aimed at doing two things. One is to explain why I don't think I want her or her politics as they are in UKIP and number two why I think she will make a success of her new political party and the fact that I do genuinely uh, wish her and all of the people that have gone over to for Britain I do wish them the best of luck because I do think they've got an important message. So this video is predominantly to outline why why I would not have voted for Emery. And I have to say, you know, I'm the Secretary of Greater Manchester. I think virtually every single chairman in Greater Manchester holds the same opinions as me. So I'm not really just speaking on my own. I am speaking with a large number of people stood behind me. I'm not so sure. All of them would be wishing her well in a new venture, but I, I definitely am doing. So the leadership election, which is our third in a year, which is uh, an embarrassment on its own, um, wasn't well attended. Um, I know lots of senior people that have told me that they didn't bother voting because it, it was an awful leadership election. There were, uh, to, to begin with, there were 11 candidates, which was ridiculous and stupid. But it looked as though it was going to be a straight fight between uh, Peter Whittle, who was the candidate that I voted for, Anne Marie and John Rhys Evans. Um, John Rhys Evans, I didn't vote for him uh, the last time he stood. I, I didn't particularly understand what it was that he was going for. But I will say he came and gave a speech in Bolton and I was blown away. I was absolutely amazed by what he had to say and the the genuineness with which he wanted to do what he was suggesting he would do and he definitely was my number two vote um i voted for peter um and i was very surprised as i think many were that um Amory came second and peter came fifth as we know we got henry bolton i'd not even considered henry bolton um, I actually thought he'd wrecked any chance that he could have had, and I didn't think he had much of a chance, but I think he absolutely wrecked all chances he had by 
threatening to take judicial review actions to have Anne-Marie Waters removed. Now, I definitely was no Anne-Marie Waters fan, but I was absolutely furious that he did that. And, yeah, I'll, I'll mention in a few minutes about his um, Nazi jibe about Anne-Marie Waters' followers. I, that infuriated me. But I am 100% behind Henry now. So, you know, let's see, let's see where he goes to. The election, as I say, wasn't a, a fantastic outcome, although I have to say that I did see a lot of camaraderie start with kippers, which I've not seen for quite a while. I saw it during the Stoke by-election, but before that and after that, you know, it, it was missing. People were leaving the party in droves. Um, only 50% of uh, the membership voted and Marie Waters got 21% of that vote. Um, my prediction was she would get um, less than 10%. So she got double what I thought she would. And I have to say, I think she did a fantastic job given the, the negativity and the nastiness that was thrown at her throughout the whole of the election given the um, almost obvious s nastiness from uh, the upper echelons of the party and on a daily basis she was taking a pounding on Twitter and Facebook. Any news interview she did, she was made out to be you know, basically a Nazi. And I think for the vast majority of the time it was extremely unfair. So the reason I originally was um, very negative about Anne-Marie Waters was not actually Anne-Marie Waters herself, it was her supporters. And it really surprised me, you know, the, the nastiness, the, the absolute nastiness that they were coming out with. You know, they were calling anybody that didn't support Anne-Marie Waters was a coward and Anybody that didn't support Amory Waters is spineless, and it was absolutely outrageous. For the first, I think the first month of the election, all we saw was nastiness from a hardcore of her um, supporters. And I have to say, for me and a lot of people that I know, that really didn't go down well. I, I to this day, I, I genuinely do not understand how they thought they could convince people to support Amory Waters by calling them spineless cowards. And, you know, it, it was absolutely uncalled for. And she got a very, very bad reputation out of a small handful of her senior people going on Twitter and on Facebook and just screaming abuse at people. It, it was unnecessary, it was uncalled for, and I think to this day it has done Amory Waters uh, a lot of damage because people did not want to listen to what she had to say because we'd already heard from her supporters what, what their campaign was. Denigrate anybody that isn't, you know, doesn't have Islam as their number one issue, and that's just wrong. One of the things that I I saw more often uh, than I cared to was the the statement and the suggestion that the only person with balls to stand up and call out Islam is Anne-Marie Waters and everybody else is a spineless coward. And this was, yeah, it was said over and over and over again. She's the only one that's got the uh, the balls to do it. She's the only one that's got the guts to do it. And with the greatest of respect, that is complete bullshit. That isn't true. Britain First was set up for the sole purpose of going after Islam and the two leaders, well, the leader and deputy leader of Britain First have been calling out Islam since Britain First first got set up. So I don't see Emery Waters saying or doing anything that Britain First hasn't been doing for a number of years. So this suggestion that they are, that she is the only one that's got the guts to stand up against Islam is bullshit and it does make you look really stupid. And that's, I think, where my position on the election and, and Marie Waters comes from. I did actually pose this question a couple of times and I did ask 
a couple of other people to pose this question. What is the difference between Amory Waters' version of UKIP and Britain First? Where, where's the difference? What is it? Based upon what she wanted to do with the party, what difference is there between her and Britain First? I, I genuinely don't see see what it is. Britain First goes out and raids mosques. They stand up and abuse Muslims, their number one priority is calling out Muslims. They stand and have demonstrations outside of mosques. They challenge uh, imams and, and Muslims and they're, they, you know, pr pretty much 90% of what they talk about is, is Islam and Muslims. So what is it that Amory Waters is wanting to do that is any different to Britain first and so my question has always been why did she come and join when when she left Labour which I do not criticise her for you know lots of people are again the hypocrisy of the people on her side calling out anyone that supports Henry Bolton because he used to be a Lib Demer forgetting the fact that their leader used to be Labour and he left the Lib Dems a long time ago and she only left Labour a short time ago. So that hypocrisy is another one that does make um, some people look really silly. But when she left Labour and she was choosing where to go, I don't understand why she chose UKIP. Why did she not choose Britain first? I, I, I've posed the question, I've asked the question and nobody to this day has been able to come back and explain to me because Britain First is is a political group that is set up to do what Anne-Marie Waters wants out of politics. So why you can't wait, you know, our number one priority isn't Islam and it's not going to be, you know, uh, we saw virtually everybody say that if she won, they would walk away from UKIP because, and this is important, we didn't join Britain first. Had we wanted Britain first, we would have gone and joined Britain first. But people like me and, and many people that I know, we joined UKIP. Islam isn't our number one priority. So there are people in the party, including me, that Islam is important. It's an issue that needs talking about. It's an issue that gets buried by the left and that angers us. But it isn't our number one priority. And that is why you've got to ask Emory Waters, why did she join UKIP when the, the normal place for her to go would have been Britain first or the BNP, not UKIP? And nobody can answer that question for me. As we know, Emory has um, elected to walk away from UKIP and I fully understand why she did that. I. Uh, I think it would have been very difficult for her to stay. I saw an interview that she did. It was a really good one. And she said she wanted to stay just to really piss off the senior people in UKIP. And I was like, yes, um, I, I, I did like that side of her. So, you know, I'm, I'm glad that she has found um, the way of doing what she wanted to do. And she has the support that I'm very surprised. Uh, I'm not very surprised that already there is a huge swell of people that are moving over. And on the 27th of, let me just check the date, 27th of October, um, she, the Electoral Commission uh, released the confirmation that she was, uh, that for Britain had been registered with them. Um, and I really do wish her well with her. Um, I don't particularly like Britain First. So I hope she manages to set up a group that has a genuine voice and a genuine thing to say because I believe that, you know, she is genuine in what she's saying. Again, as I say, I don't think it needs to be rammed on about as much as um, she talks about it. But she she's going to. So my view is... Set up for Britain. There's a lot of people there that are supporting her, and I, I'm fairly sure it will last longer than twelve months. 
Um, I just hope that they don't do the the negative stuff that Britain First does. I did watch the launch party. I actually put it on the uh, Manchester Facebook page and um, the chairman of the party was not too happy with that and I got told to take it down. But I did sit and watch it and I was surprised it didn't have um, the pizzazz that I was hoping it would have. Um, I was even more, in one in one respect, I was upset that journalists entirely ignored it with the exception of Tommy Robinson. Um, I thought that was unfair. But equally, if you're going to interview Anne-Marie Waters, who better to do it than Tommy Robinson? You know, he's, uh, I, he's got brilliant as a journalist. So I was really pleased that it was just... Uh, Tommy Robinson that got to cover it and so the negativity and the nastiness wasn't there but I also was was annoyed that the British media just ignored it as if it it didn't matter when in fact I think it does matter and I think it matters a lot so I watched it I don't you know I see lots of people say that she's captivating when she talks and and I don't find that I find her um she she isn't engaging and she doesn't seem to get angry the way I think she should get angry but you know maybe that's just me the one thing that really did uh amuse me and I'm sorry I'm finding amusement in it but during the uh leadership election one of the refrains almost entirely from everybody that supported her was you're a centrist, you're a centrist. And they just kept saying it to everybody as though being uh, the centre of politics is a really disgusting, dirty thing. Um, so for Britain got set up on Twitter and I was absolutely howling when it put out a tweet that said, for Britain stands strictly against the far right and race hatred we are a centre ground party supporting individual rights for Brits. I'm sorry that the the amount of people that gave people like me abuse, calling me a centrist, as though you know it's a it's one of the worst things you can call somebody when, in fact, the party that they're now supporting is a centrist party, and I'm sorry. I've actually seen people that have objected to that tweet saying that they um, they gladly wear the moniker of far right. But I think the majority of the people I know that have, have gone and gone over to for Britain aren't far right. and They're nothing like far right. Um, I think they are all slightly right of politics to me. And I... I I make no bones about the fact that I'm right of centre, but I am a centrist, definitely. Um, so I do know that there are people that will class themselves as being on the right, will be annoyed that that, that tweet went out. <laughs> and linking that, you know, it's one thing that really did uh, annoy me during the leadership and was Anne-Marie forever being called a far-right person. You know, the, the Times did an absolutely disgusting series of articles on her where she was called far right in every single one of them. The Guardian did an absolutely disgusting um, article. It was an opinion piece in which she was called far right. And it was all of it. It was uncalled for and unnecessary. She isn't far right. She's nothing like far right. So I'm going to read uh, one of the articles, which uh, it's the one that came from the Times. Um, and it said, a, a woman from Dublin who lost UKIP leadership battle is to set up her own far-right party. Amory Waters, who is originally from Stony Batter, is planning to establish for Britain to capitalise on the electoral demise of the British National Party. UKIP has suffered a split after the runner-up in its leadership contest and now she uh, has quit to start for... Um, can't read, sorry... Uh, she has quit start for Britain, a far-right party. Amory Waters, who won 21.3% of the vote in the UKIP leadership election, said she left after she and her supporters were branded Nazis and racist by Nigel Farage and Henry Bolton, the party's new leader. 
Um, and there was more articles. Uh, there was an article on the 29th of September, article on the 26th of August. All of them, every single one of them, uh, was calling her far right and uh, a number of them were you know, absolutely digging on the fact that she's a lesbian and a feminist and I, that's irrelevant you know i i'm gay but i don't think that um shapes what or who i am in politics and i don't think Anne-Marie waters uh being a lesbian um shapes who she is the reason that they're so pissed off with her is they cannot ever understand why gay people have a voice that isn't on the left of politics. If you're not on the left of politics and you're gay, you're, you're doing gay wrong. Um, and, and that's why the Times and the Guardian keep, keep honing in on that, that single one issue because they think that, um, that it is, is unusual that somebody that's gay is, um, on the right of politics and it shows what absolute arseholes those journalists are. So I, and as I say, I'm not going to pretend that she she's my favourite person. She isn't. I I definitely would have left UKIP if she'd have become um, leader. And my my principal point is I don't see any difference in her politics and Britain First's politics. And I'm afraid I don't like Britain First. I don't like what they do. I don't like their hatred of um islam i think there are things about islam that needs dealing with and we need to deal with it urgently so i went on to Anne-Marie waters um website to have a look at is she now that the election's over and now she she's now dealing with um with setting up a new party is Islam and talking about Islam is that still the only thing she can talk about? So I went and had a look on Amory Waters' website on the twenty second of October at two p.m., which was a Sunday, and I looked at the top ten tweets that she had done that weren't retweets and weren't responses to other people. So tweets from her, the top ten from her. Uh, showed five were about Islam and five were not. You know, I, I could have gone on further, but 50% of what she was talking about was Islam. About 25%, 30% was about setting up the new party and the rest were, were just comments to people. Um, that level of obsession just would have wrecked UKIP because that is... This is the important bit for me, the distinction between, uh, say, Peter Whittle, who has Islam as a fundamental part of his politics. I would say Islam makes up 10% of what he says or said during the leadership, whereas with Anne Marie, it was 90%, it was 80%. It was so often and so repeated that that's what she would have done to the party and people like me and, and many other people like me just didn't want to be in a party that was that. So why is it important to people like me that we didn't become Britain first? Well, there's two reasons for that. Number one, as I've already mentioned, is we don't want to be all about Islam. Islam's in there. Islam will always be in there because there is a problem with Islam. You know, we've got people murdering 22 people at a pop concert. We've got people slitting people's throats. We've got people driving trucks into big crowds of people. Islam has a problem, a significant problem, but there are other things in the UK to be concerned about. So that, that was the one part. The other part was essentially what I saw time and time again and I, I you know I'm probably going to put uh, a number of them up behind me here people saying there are millions of people out there that want to want a leader like Anne-Marie and that just isn't true 
in their little bubble on on Twitter and Facebook, where the only people that they ever talk to are people that talk about Islam, then it may sound to them like there are millions out there, but they're not. And there is an easy way to test that. You can look at the success of uh, Britain, Britain First and the BNP. BNP, you know, they, they got councillors, they got two MEPs, and then they died and disappeared. But they weren't doing that well in elections. Um, they simply weren't. So if you want to look at it, at it in a more modern sphere, look at Britain First. You know, they did a by-election and they came nowhere. And they did the uh, the London Mayor and they came nowhere. And they did the London Assembly and they came nowhere. So I know had Amory Waters turned UKIP into what she wanted it to, as well as having uh, no funders because all of our financial backers were going to walk away as well as having no count well very few councillors um and as far as i know one or two meps um we would have got nowhere in the elections these people that say there are millions of people out there wanting to vote for somebody like that if they are out there, then they've never gone out and voted for uh, Britain first and they've never gone out and voted for the BNP. Um, and as far as I'm concerned, the same will happen with for Britain. It will be great as a pressure group. It will be great um, at banging the drum in the issue regarding Islam. But at the polls, it will it will go nowhere. And UKIP has a hard enough time um, at the polls as it is. If we became the anti-Islam party, as Nigel Farage said, we may as well pack up and go home. So I wanted to uh, to to give you the figures. So again, they're they're on the website, and so you can go and check them for yourself. In two thousand and fifteen, the BNP stood eight candidates and got a grand total across all eight candidates of one thousand six hundred and sixty seven votes, not the millions or the tens of thousands. Eight candidates they got. 1600 votes liberty gb which is uh equivalent to what uh for britain will be put up three candidates and got a total of, for all three of 418 votes in 2017 bmp put up 10 candidates 10 and got 4642 votes that's 400 votes each not the millions you know the, these are the people that are standing up and shouting about Islam. So where are these millions of votes that people talk about? Liberty GB didn't put any up in 2017. In the Batley and Spen by-election in October 2016, Jack Buckby, who managed Anne-Marie uh, Waters' campaign, he got just 220 votes, not... The millions of votes that people talk about. In the 2016 London Assembly, Britain first put up 10 candidates, 10 candidates and one mayoral candidate. The 10 received, uh, and I think this is quite good for Britain first, they received a total of 39,000 votes, 30, 39,071 votes over 10 candidates. The mayoral candidate got a total of 31,300 BMP put up 11 candidates and got a total of 15,833 votes. Its mayoral candidate got 13,325 votes. In Rochester and Strew by-election in 2014, so outside of London, because everyone said you can't class Britain first at the London Assemblies because, because London's been taken over and use that awful phrase, London standing. Um, so Rochester and Strood, by election 2014, Britain first put up a candidate, got a total of 56 votes. That's what would have happened to UKIP had Anne Marie Waters taken over. And as much as I support what she's doing with Britain for uh, for, for Britain, 
I don't think electorally it will do anything. I think, in fact, it will bomb at every election. It's going to take her at least 10 years to get anywhere because she's going to have to learn that at the polls, people are not going to vote for somebody that is a single issue. UKIP, when it was a single issue party, got nowhere. It wasn't until 2014 when we started banging on about the, the plurality of politics that we started getting votes. And, and for Britain, it's got a manifesto that covers everything, but it's its members, its supporters only talk about one of those policies. Anne-Marie Waters, yeah, you know, I've seen her, she's done some really good um, uh, interviews. She did a one-to-one -one on Facebook, uh, a one-to-one, -one, a, a going live on Facebook, and it was great. You know, she, she did talk about other issues, but predominantly it was talking about Islam. So when Full Britain gets to the polls, it is going to come last. When they get money into the party, which I'm sure eventually they will, they'll realise that people just are not going to vote for that one single issue. And when your members, party leader and supporters only talk about that one issue, you are not going to get other people. People like me are never going to join a party that has that one single issue.